Hello, I'm Mark Hales and this is Castle Coombe. But before we look at how to drive the circuit, let's visit Merlin Motorsport, based right here in the paddock. We sell quality racing parts and accessories worldwide through our website and shop. All our parts are hand-picked for reliability and manufacturing excellence. Quality parts, excellent service and reliable technical help is what we're all about. And, due to huge stock volumes, we're able to get your goods to you in the fastest time possible, mostly next day in mainland UK. So, contact us or order online at merlinmotorsport.co.uk. The piece of track that runs past the pits and leads to Avon Rise and Quarry Corner is the fastest part of an already fast circuit. The difference between this and most other tracks though is that here the road is not straight and it's not level. The bumps that have added an extra challenge to Coombe since the circuit was opened are at their biggest just here. The road is temptingly wide too so there's an infinite number of lines you could take. The ideal is the shortest route possible, but how short depends on the car you're driving. Start over to the left, and at first, aim for an apex a long way up the road. You'll be going mighty fast by now, and you don't want to be too wide on the exit. What you do at Folly will affect your approach to Avon Rise, so here's a simple rule. Stay wide as you enter, and you will aim further round the corner at Folly and that sets you closer to the verge on the way out, which is where you need to be. The wider the entry, the longer the road, but it is always the safest place to start. You need to experiment a little because how wide will depend on your car. The drive over Avon Rise sets you up for Quarry, which is one of Coombe's signature corners. And once again, there are plenty of options for both. The more important corner is Quarry, which seems to tighten as you get to the middle. Avon Rise hides your view of the road as you run along the verge, so there's nothing to aim at. Just remember that the road turns left as you go over the crest. If you're driving something light or with plenty of grip, you can turn less and make more of a straight line through Avon Rise. The single-seaters will aim for the set of traffic lights on the bank opposite, which allows them to keep the car straight, then break the other side of the rise. It makes the entry for quarry tighter, so they are trading that for the speed they carried over the rise. Road cars, or historics which have less grip, will need to stay wider on the entry to Avon Rise, aiming to run along the verge to the left as they exit, and open out the entry to quarry. It depends on how fast you're travelling on approach, but the safest way at first is to break along the verge as the road begins to climb, float over the rise, then break again to settle the car for the entry to quarry. As ever, it depends on your car, so the ideal for you will be somewhere between the two strategies. Just be aware that the car goes light as you go over the rise, so you need to be careful on the brakes especially when the road is wet. The short run from the rise down to quarry is another bumpy piece of coombe, which adds yet more excitement. But whatever you drive, the next apex you're looking for is further round than you thought, because quarry turns through more than 90 degrees. The road is wide and a good exit will allow you to get on the gas and power up farm straight towards the S's. Any track needs a bit of research to see what suits your car and the conditions, but Coombe needs more than most. The important thing is to build up to it. This is what happens if you go over Avon Rise too fast and try and get into Quarry too soon. Let's have a final look at a good line from which to build using a completely standard road model like this Audi A4.
The S's were created in 1999 to slow everything down on the run towards Old Paddock. It's something they've done very effectively, but not for the first time at Coombe, there are traps for the unwary. The wide expanse of road at the entry to the S's makes the first part quicker than the second, so you have to accept some compromise. You can't go as fast as you'd like on the way in, or you won't make the left-hander on the way out. The first right-hander is actually very shallow, so you can get some of your braking done on the straight, then sweep across the road into the turn, using the width of the track to straighten the line. Then if you need, use the last 50 metres or so to slow the car enough to take the left. Some cars will even allow you to start the turn off the straight, then get all the braking done as you approach the midpoint. Just be aware that if you make too much of a straight line through this first half, it will cramp the entry to the left-hander which comes next. The apex for the left which follows is the more important part of the S's. The left isn't that much sharper than the right, but the entry is tighter because the road has funneled down into the sequence. There's a fair bit of room on the exit, but you still need to apex far enough round the turn so you don't run out of road. Make that clip too early, or take it all a fraction too fast, and you will definitely run wide. And you can see where a fair few people have done exactly that. Fortunately, there's nothing to hit, but it will definitely mess up the run towards Old Paddock. The entry to Old Paddock is a familiar theme. How much you need to stay wide and open it up will depend on how much grip your car can offer, but also how fast it can accelerate out of the S's. So until you're sure, keep it steered left as you exit the S's and move over to the middle of the road to straighten the run through Old Paddock. If you find your car can do it all with track to spare, then you can move more to the right as you enter the corner and shorten the road. The most important thing is still that middle part of the S's. Don't make it too early or try it too fast until you know exactly what your car will allow you to do. So let's have another look at a run through the corner in a completely stock road car like this Audi A4 Saloon. The clue is in the name. Hammerdown may not be as fast as it once was, but it's still pretty quick. A bit like Folly, Hammerdown is a gentle bend halfway along a straight piece of road. And although almost anything can take it without so much as a lift, how you enter affects how you exit and get ready to break for tower, which is an important corner. Best strategy at first is to head to the right as soon as you can out of Old Paddock and let the car move to the middle of the road. Then you almost leave the apex of Hammerdown until the exit, aiming just to run along the edge of the track all the way towards tower. If it's all very easy because your car has grip to spare, then you don't need to head so far to the right on the exit of Old Paddock. You can pretty much hug the verge all the way around Hammerdown. Tower is a medium speed corner, but there are two important details that you must consider. It turns through more than 90 degrees, so it's tighter than it looks as you approach. And second, the middle part is hidden, partly by the marshal's hut, but also because the road falls away in the second half and that rolls the camber away from the turn. It's very easy to pile into tower too early diving for the first apex you can spot, but then as you reach the second half, the road tightens and the camber drops away. The barriers are very close here and there is not much runoff. The good news is that it's easy to avoid all this. Aim to miss that tempting first apex by about a car's width, aiming for one about two thirds of the way round the corner. And just when you're tempted to release the car and get on the gas because you can see the exit, 
Just hold it to the right and aim to leave half a car's width between the grass and the left side wheels. In most cars, the camber will then pull you out to the edge and the car will use that last bit of road without your trying. Let's have another look at a run through the corner in a completely stock road car like this Audi A4 Saloon. It's easy to imagine Bobby's is much the same as the S's. It was built at the same time and for similar reasons in this case to slow cars down before they got to Camp Corner. But it's completely different. The whole sequence is much tighter, the run from tower is shorter so the approach is slower, and then the right is sharper than the left. There's an additional challenge in that the entry to the right is hidden by a large pile of tyres, put there to stop people straight lining the corner. They're attempting reasonably flat curbs surrounding each apex too, and using those will also straighten the run through the corner. How much of the two curbs you're allowed to use without penalty will depend on who is running the day, but for this guide, we'll assume you can only use the bits of track between them. As you exit tower, be sure to look up the road towards the entry for bobbies, but you must also look beyond the pile of tyres. It's very easy to allow your gaze to be drawn by them and then you'll find yourself aiming at them. The apex you need is behind, so at first make yourself stay wider on the approach so you can hit an apex further along the kerb. It will feel slow at first, but you can add a bit more speed once you know where to aim. The bonus is that it opens up the entry to the left-hander and allows you to get on the power without running wide over the kerb. You can see where people have done just that, so take it as a reminder. And the apex will almost take care of itself if you've done the work in the first half. You'll simply be powering the car out and using all the road in front of you. If you aim too early for the right-hander though, you will almost certainly find yourself running wide in the left. Once you've made your exit from Bobby's, keep the car tucked in close to the kerb on the right for a few moments. Westway is not really a corner or corners unless you turn them into one, but it makes sense to straighten the line past the two clipping points. In some very powerful cars or on a wet track, the second kink can still surprise you. There is also the entry to the pits coming up on the left. You'll see the yellow line that protects cars slowing down to leave the circuit. If there's no one there, like now, you don't have to avoid it. If there is, then positioning your car further to the right will make it easier to pass them without slowing down. Making your car turn for the right without running wide and messing up the entry to the left makes Bobby's an interesting challenge. A good exit is a nice bonus to carry onto Westway and towards Dean Strait. It's still a fair distance to Camp Corner. So let's have a look at a run through the sequence in a completely standard road car like this Audi A4. The last part of the track and a reasonably long straight leading to a quick and demanding corner. Dean Strait leads out of Westway and heads you towards camp, but it's also where the pit entry road feeds off the track. There's a yellow line to protect cars slowing down to enter the narrow road that leads off and if there is anybody preparing to use it, you must be ready to give them space. If not, you can stay left for the entire run along Dean and down to camp. Accurate braking for camp needs a little research, 
to find out how much and how late. It is all too easy to take off too much speed, just as it's easy to lose too little. The pit wall is close on the exit, so once again, build up to it. Camp tightens very slightly in the second half, so the apex is usually further round than you first expected. Aim to run your right side wheels as close as possible to the tempting piece of kerb, which makes a good marker. Look for it on approach because it's easy to find yourself half a car's width away when you get there. The main thing to guard against is making your apex too early or getting into the corner too fast. Either risks running wide on the exit where there is very little kerb and precious little grass before you contact something solid. A good exit from camp sends you onto the start-finish straight at high speed. There's a long, wide, undulating road from here, all the way through Folly towards Avon Rise, and you'll be travelling faster by the end than you will almost anywhere else. It's one of the things that makes Castle Coombe so exciting. So, let's have a look at a run through the whole lot in a completely standard saloon car, like this Audi A4.